So in this video, I'll cover camshaft related stuff. I'll cover putting the lifters in, installing the camshafts, timing the camshafts, and resetting and installing the chain tensioner. Start by grabbing a lifter and cleaning it up with carb cleaner. Then, when you know which slot it goes into, lube it up with your favorite oil and also lube up the slot with oil. Don't be shy when squirting the oil around. The more you have, the easier it will be to slide back in. The lifters are machined extremely precisely to fit the slot, so you have to put them in at the exact angle in order to get them to slide in. They will have the tendency to get jammed, so wiggle them around until you free them. They will all slide right in once the angle is perfect. Repeat this process until you've got all the lifters in. Now fish the chain out of the block and lay it on the side of the head. Then squirt plenty of oil on the intake cam journals. Grab the intake camshaft and pass it through the chain. Drop it into the journals with a timing hole on the cam sprocket roughly aligned with where 30 degrees after top that center would be. Oil up the exhaust side and drop the exhaust camshaft and align it in the same manner. This will ensure you won't have to rotate the camshaft too much when timing the engine. Next, squirt plenty of oil on the camshaft bearing surfaces. The camshaft bearing caps are marked by a number to identify their position in the cylinder head. Be sure to put the right caps in the right spots. When putting a cap in, make sure to squirt some oil onto the bearing surface. Drop the cap in, make sure the threads for the bolts are clean, and thread them in a little bit by hand so you don't lose them. On a side note, if you know that your engine will sit for some time before first starting up, I recommend you use assembly lube instead of oil on the camshaft. I put back together as much of the engine as possible because I wanted to start the engine up right away as soon as everything was done, so I used oil instead of assembly lube knowing that I wouldn't take very long to start the engine up. Now comes the nerve racking part, tightening the cam caps down. The goal is to evenly tighten down all the caps so you do not put any stress on the camshaft. First thing to do is just to run all the bolts down with a hand tool until they start squeezing the caps. Now you have to focus on the caps whose adjacent lobes are exerting a downward pressure on the lifters. You have to start by tightening those caps down. Do each bolt at most one eighth of a turn at a time. You should always be going on to the next bolt that feels the most loose, that way you are not tightening one cap down too fast and stressing the camshaft. Once the caps touch the cylinder head, you can install the remaining caps whose adjacent lobes do not push down on the lifters. Then you have to take out your torque wrench and torque all the bolts at 21 newton meters. In the interest of not skipping over any steps, I'll show you the entire process. To keep you company, instead of me blabbering on endlessly about taxes, politics and the economic situation in Uganda, I'll search for some suiting music on YouTube and then sort it by least amount of copyright claims. And now with the help of this freeze frame, I'll go over how to time the engine. First you must lock both camshafts into their basic position, taking care that the cam adjuster is in the fully retarded position. Then you have to rotate the engine clockwise while pulling up on the timing chain until you're at 20 degrees past top dead center. With the intake cam still locked, slide the chain onto the intake cam gear's teeth such that there is no slack on the intake side of the chain. All the slack should be on the exhaust side. Notice that the exhaust cam sprocket is keyed to the camshaft. 
To fit the exhaust cam sprocket, unlock the exhaust camshaft and rotate it counterclockwise ever so slightly until you can fit the sprocket. Bolt the sprocket up using three new Torx bolts to 20 Nm, then tighten them by an additional 60 degrees. This will torque the bolts to yield and thus they should not be reused a second time. It's a good idea to have an extra sand on hand in case your timing is wrong. We will check the timing after installing the chain tensioner. Attach the top guide rail and torque the two bolts holding it to 10 Newton meters. Now disassemble the chain tensioner. Unscrew the end cap and take out the spring and the small internal black pin. Then pop out the tensioner body. Here's a shot of how the chain tensioner goes together and its two metal seals. Clean everything up with a lint-free cloth, paying it particular attention to the metal seals. Both the seals will be under full oil pressure, so make sure they are clean not to get an oil leak. When you've got everything cleaned up, push the tensioner body back in, making sure it only clicks once. This is very important, if you hear more than one click, take it out and try again. Failing to do so will snap the intake camshaft. So now you can install the lower part of the tensioner which you just assembled. Screw it into the block along with a larger metal seal and torque it to 80 Newton meters. Then insert the spring and the thrust pin into the chain tensioner. Finally, you have to get this end cap on. This is the most difficult part of the process. My advice is to get an extra set of hands on this. One person has to push on the wrench to force the end cap's threads into the tensioner, while the other person just turns the wrench. This is the easiest way of putting the cap back in. Torque the end cap to 40 Newton meters. To check the timing, turn the engine clockwise through two full cycles, or four turns of the crankshaft. Then set the crankshaft to 20 degrees after top dead center and try to lock the intake camshaft. Slowly rotate the crankshaft until the pin locks the intake camshaft. It should lock between 20 and 30 degrees after top dead center. Take your pin out of the intake camshaft and now try to lock the exhaust camshaft. It should lock between 25 and 35 degrees after top dead center. If you fall within these ranges then your engine is timed correctly and your chain has not stretched out of specification. Now clean up the timing cover surface, apply a line of RTV silicone to the mating surface and reinstall it. The M8 bolts are torqued at 25 Newton meters and the M6 bolts are torqued at 10 Newton meters. And that's it for this video. I apologize for the extensive use of freeze frames here. I lost some of my original footage. Anyway, the rest of the footage seems to be in good working order, so stay tuned for a final video on this series.